In case anyone's confused about Joe, where Joe really stands politically. Because of this, do you think that your political or individual ideology, do you think that you fit into a political party in America today? Definitely not. Right. No, I'm, I am such a homeless person when it yeah. comes to politics. I am liberal in every social way. First of all, when I was a kid, my family, my parents were hippies. Um, we were on welfare. We had food stamps. Like that was what kept my family alive when I was a small boy. I remember it very clearly. I've I talked remember about going to the supermarket. I've talked about his like uh, uh, his background and his like uh, his upbringing being like a leading motivator and him having like pretty f decent takes when it comes to a, a lot of shit. So this is true. It and my parents buying food food stamps. I'm no, 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 no. Socially liberal, economically conservative, dude. No, dude. No, I don't think he's gonna say he's fiscally conservative, dude. No, dude. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but dude, you guys have not heard Joe Rogan. I feel like, like he's literally fucking pro social safety nets, dude. You guys are. He's he's a fan of Medicare for all. He's pro social safety nets. Like, I think Joe Rogan is the type of dude. I think Joe Rogan is the type of fucking dude who, if you were to talk to him, and you guys know I fucking criticize him like nonstop, if you were to talk to him and be like, hey, do you mind paying higher taxes if it wasn't going to fucking war, like endless wars and shit, and instead going to socialized medicine and free college, you'd be like, yeah, that sounds great. And a lot of people feel this way. A lot of Americans feel this way. I remember being embarrassed that we drank powdered milk I remember being on welfare, you know, but they got out of that. It is, of course, still entirely dependent on who the fuck he's talking to. Let's be real. They worked their way out of that situation. They used government assistance in the best possible way and went on to, to live a fulfilled and happy and successful life. I saw it happen. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I have a dedication to social programs. I have a dedication to this idea that all social programs like welfare and food stamps, all those things, it's not all bad. And people think it's, uh, it enables people to be lazy. It's, it's not always the case. I think sometimes people get in a bad situation, and as a community, it's good to have a safety net. Like, it's good to be, to think of ourselves as neighbors. It's good to think of ourselves as country, as a community. And you contributed that. I happily pay my taxes. I have no problem with it. I'm, 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 I'm happy. I would be, I'd, I'd be happy to pay more if I thought the government was competent and it was going to make mm -hmm. for a better life for people. If it was going to make for less homelessness, less joblessness, less people that are, uh, that are fucked with medical bills, less people that are in debt because of student what loans. Happened? If I thought... Wait, where were the fucking idiots in the chat who were, like, telling me the number one Joe Rogan fan of many fucking years, a person who has literally sat down and talked to him for hours in the past, a person who literally was a fan of the Young Turks until he, you know, psychotic Sam uh, Harris fucking blew uh, half of his fucking brain out. What's up? He literally said verbatim exactly how I said Joe Rogan is like. Not only that... But now chatters who are saying, at least you didn't fucking pre-watch this video, are now saying, Pago pre-watched. You were so convinced that I was wrong, dude. You encouraged Joe hate, so chatters just blindly went and hated on him? First, encourage Joe hate? There's plenty to fucking criticize Joe Rogan on, okay? He has platformed prominent white supremacists and has unironically <coughs> contributed to an entire generation of dudes becoming like, right wing uh by subtly slowly but surely like a chameleon uh adapting to the political perspective of his fucking hyper reactionary guest that he has on he'll have like one or two left-leaning leftist left adjacent people okay for the overwhelming majority of like right-wing propagandists that he has on that he also uh appeals to whenever he has them on and that's really fucking damaging. There's a reason why. There's a reason why uh, motherfuckers are constantly repeating like, you know, trans women in sports uh, takes in the chat. It like chat lights up every time we bring that up. And that's because of fucking Joe Rogan. I bet you hate Jordan Peterson, huh? No. I what do you mean, dude? I love Jordan Peterson, dude.
Why are you pretending that he has a profound take here? He just changes his color based on his guest, really? You know who the fucking guest is that he's uh, talking to right now? Literally, Black Rifle Coffee CEO, you fucking dipshit. So if he was a, being a chameleon in that circumstance, he probably would be like, yeah, actually, I fucking hate the government assistance. Like, it makes people so lazy. And most people are like that, by the way, okay? Most people are complex. That's why I literally said most Americans feel this way. He moved to Texas to avoid taxes, anti-vax, anti-trans, play the rest. Dude, listen. You're missing the forest because you're hyper-focusing on the fucking trees, dumbass. There are people just like him who you can move over to our side. And there are plenty who were like him or even further along the right-wing pipeline that has changed their perspective. So immediately rushing to be like, ah, nah, nah, nah. these people are fucking bad. They're wrong. They have bad opinions. Without like hearing the, the, the complex uh, positions that they may or may not hold, you're eliminating like hundreds of millions of voters and non-voters from political action and organizing. So shut the fuck up. I feel like it's been a long time since I've talked about this sort of shit. So you guys like often forget, okay? This doesn't mean like I, uh, you know, uh, think Joe Rogan is always right. I literally fucking shit on him nonstop. You have to be a fucking real Joe Rogan head like myself to be able to recognize that though. So I don't fault you for not knowing. But yeah, he does. He, he has these positions. He's held these positions for a very long time. I don't think he's like lying here either, by the way, to make an argument. If that was the case, I'd be happy to pay more. Hundreds of millions is an exaggeration. That's not an exaggeration. There are tens of millions, if not a hundred million people in the minimum that have weird fucking complex ideas. American, the American political machine is fundamentally flawed. Okay. Americans uh, contain all of these contradictions that normally would not work with one another when it comes to uh, the way that they express their political points of view, okay? That's how it always is. That's why you hear, like, anti-corporate messaging coming from fucking anti-vaxxer psychos that are like, yeah, I hate big corporations. I voted for Donald Trump, and, and that's why I don't like big pharma. It's like, what? You hate big corporations, and, and that's why you voted for Donald Trump? Like, what, what is, that makes no sense. Okay? The point is to... Take the actual, fundamentally true sentiment that those people feel and describe to them why they're correct and then get them to recognize that that skepticism can be a healthy skepticism that you can motivate them to understand and slowly fucking, you know, anti-capitalist pill them. So, I'm very... I'm very... Uh liberal in that way. I'm very liberal in terms of civil rights, gay rights, women's rights, all those all those core issues that make a person a progressive. I'm very much in line with that. I also have a lot of guns. Yeah. I'm also a hunter. I'm very pro second amendment. I'm also very pro military, very pro police, very pro, pro first response. Yeah, he's also a transphobe. For sure. Fire department. Um, I think you need like discipline. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. You need authority. I've been a, a disciplined person my whole life. I, I've been around people that are either military people or police officers because of my martial arts experience my whole fucking life. I have a deep respect for them. You never hear me talking shit about the police or the military. No. It's not my thing. I don't, I don't, so I'm in this weird, because that puts me in conservative yeah. land. I'm very conservative in that regard. I'm very conservative in that I believe in discipline, and I believe that if you give people a way out of things, and you let them weasel their way through things and find excuses and, and find uh, scapegoats and reasons why they're not successful and reasons why things are fucked up, and they'll do it. They'll do it because it's human nature. It's human nature for people to find, to seek comfort and to seek, uh, to seek escape and to seek uh, excuses. It's a human nature thing. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I'm very, very right-wing. I'm very discipline-oriented. Um, I believe that- Dude, this is like, this is just propaganda. That like, leftists are not discipline-oriented. That only conservatism is like, discipline-oriented. That's it. And it's, it's also, 
here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are a couple things that conservatives have been able to just have on lock, no matter what. Certain ideas that they were able to jump on early on as early adopters and, be, and, were, very able, and were able to successfully propagandize. Ideas such as uh, uh, fucking uh, freedom. Like, only conservatives love freedom, okay? Liberals don't like freedom. But in fact, back in the day, fucking liberals love freedom. Ideas such as freedom of speech, when conservatives don't fucking care about freedom of speech at all. They don't care about freedom at all either. They don't care about individual liberties at all. They literally want women to uh, uh, forcibly carry their pregnancy to fucking term. Like, literally the opposite of, like, allowing people to have autonomy or personal liberty. They, uh, they, cl they have ownership over discipline. I don't know why. I don't know how. Uh, they're not very disciplined. And they, whole, they also have ownership over family values. When they literally fucking yeet out uh, uh, gay kids from their fucking families or torture them with conversion therapy. Like, that's not very family values, my dude. So, just remember that. Like, when a dummy like Joe Rogan is like, Oh, I love discipline. That's why I'm a right winger. Or I love guns. That's why I'm a right winger. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It's just a fucking idiot who has never had this conversation with someone who's like, Dude, no, you're wrong. Like, these guys who say that they're, like, pro-free speech, they're not fucking pro-free speech. Like, even when they were uh, screaming about how the left wants to shut down your free speech and dissent, they were mostly, conservative organizations were mostly responsible for, uh, uh, for the, the, the highest number of fucking banned books because those were LGBT books. You see what I'm saying? Conservative equals really smart and you're dumb. Done. Leftism fucking destroyed. Explain how he's a transphobe. Sounds like hot air. Unfortunately, Joe Rogan is extremely misguided and like very scared of, of uh, trans people. And he's only had an outside look at trans people from those who uh, agree with him or also will use that skepticism and inherent fear that uh, people have because of social conditioning is that's the normative position okay see this is what i mean like trans phone omg he just want a girl to get abused in a ring someone who grow with male chemicals three-fourths of his life and don't bring up the trans female who start losing on purpose after people's was pointing their obvious advantage and took one for the team so people's would shut up about it yeah yeah dude you're definitely you're definitely a normal person with a normal brain and not like the average joe rogan supporter who literally as I pointed already before, has gotten fucking completely uh, uh, blinded by the transphobic rhetoric that Joe Rogan has promoted on his broadcast for a very, very long time, including creating conspiracies like a fucking trans woman would lose on purpose when a week ago, before she lost, she was she had an inherent competitive advantage and she wanted to really win, and that's why she was like actually faking being trans. You know what I mean? Like that's tr trans people are somehow unnatural and faking to win in competition but now also a person who would like literally undergo uh gender confirmation surgery and take like hrt and shit and and get owned by people for just simply existing would then turn around a person who will do that for for just a gold medal is not going to turn around and lose because she wants to take one for the team shut the fuck up okay there is no winning that argument you have created a fucking mental lock where, like, you will do anything you can, just like anti-vaxxers do, for example, and move any goalposts you can to say that, like, trans, the trans person is the villain in this story. That's it. Yeah. Notice how in both cases she's viewed as deceptive. Exactly. Nice ahistorical take on conservatism and liberalism, especially, like, how you use extreme examples of conservatism, such as conversion therapy and attribute to Joe Rogan's conservatism. No, idiot. I was using that as how conservatives have been able to effectively propagandize certain concepts that are positive, when in fact, a lot of conservatives, in theory, do not abide by those same positive concepts that they propagandize as they have ownership over. Okay? Pushing away your own fucking uh, child for being trans or gay is, is not something that a person who advocates for family values would do. But conservatives do that all the fucking time. Okay? Conservatives love to make up a trans person in their head and get mad at them. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Like, holy shit. 
trans people occupy 100% of the conservative brain power, like at any given moment. It's crazy. The left finds everything the right does to be irredeemable. That's not the case with the right, though. Like what? Right wingers find certain leftist concepts to not be irredeemable. Is that what you're saying right now? The famously tolerant right wingers, dude. There has never been a point throughout history where conservatives, okay, conservatives have ever been in the right throughout history. There has never been that instance. Not a single moment where conservatives and conservative values have been, have led to progress or things that you fucking enjoy. They are intolerant. Intolerance is built into conservatism. It's conservation of pre-existing structures and hierarchies, dude. The fuck do you mean? It's literally in the name. They want to conserve the way things are. Okay? That's precisely why intolerance is baked into their worldview, dumbass. During the civil rights movement, conservatives wanted to conserve the way things are. They did not want black people to be equal. They wanted them to be separate but equal. Come on. Oh, oh my God. During the abolition movement, during the civil war, conservatives, okay, it doesn't matter if their party affiliation was different and their designation was like Dixiecrats or Democrats in the South. It does not matter. They were the conservatives then, okay? They wanted to conserve and preserve slavery, okay? Liberals are also at fault at hindering process. Well, I'm not a fucking liberal, so I don't disagree with you. I personally think a lot of liberals are themselves very conservative inherently as a consequence of upholding a capitalist organization of the economy. Wait, didn't conservatives end slavery? You think it was the conservatives? You think Abraham Lincoln and, and the abolitionists were conservatives, dude? No, it was the fucking... It was literally the other side. They didn't even move away, guys. It's not like everyone who was like, I'm a Democrat, moved over to fucking New York... And everyone who was like, I'm a Republican, moved into the South. They literally just changed their party loyalty. They are the same people. They're the sons and daughters of the same fucking people. And a lot of them still have the exact same fucking mentality. The bad Democrats were actually conservatives, two head. Dude, your brain is like, you have a zero head. I don't know how to describe anything to you because it feels like the back of your fucking head is open and someone is just eating out of it. Like someone's just eating tapioca pudding out of your mind. Conservatism is an idea or an ideology or a philosophy, if you will, that transcends party lines, okay? That's why we're not saying Republican or Democrat. We're saying conservative or progressive. The fact that you're sitting here with takes like Joe Rogan is some ultra-conservative is hilarious. He's not. That's not what I started off this conversation as. As a matter of fact, I accurately predicted what his takes were going to be about how he is fiscally a progressive person, more progressive than the average fucking Democratic politician. And I was fucking right. And I even defended that against the chat that was like literally against uh, uh, Joe Rogan saying anything that was going to be fiscally progressive. Progress is so relative to be classified as an ideology. I agree. I, I don't disagree with that. It is relative, certainly. Lincoln talked about labor being superior to capital, pretty conservative. Yeah, the, the Republican Party has like Marxian roots originally. In its origination, the Republican Party talked about abolishing slavery, chattel slavery in the South, and abolishing wage slavery in the fucking North. Does that sound like per, uh, conservative values to you? Obviously that didn't happen, but you know. How do you find unity or common ground of opening negotiations start with the right is irredeemable? Because the opening negotiations with the right is irredeemable. There is no negotiation. There's no back and forth. We're not fucking like having a conversation about like only, uh, you know, not allowing fucking 30% of, of uh, the, the kids that are coming over the border. Like, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe in capital punishment. I'm not going to have a negotiation with you where the bargaining uh, uh, starts at like, no, capital punishment is good. So let's just murder half of these fucking people, okay? And let half of them live. Like, that's, that's idiotic. The strongest bond of human sympathy outside of the family relation should be one uniting all working people of all nations and tongues and kindreds. I'd love to hear a conservative say this quote was said by a conservative. Labor being superior to capital is fucking conservative? No, we're being sarcastic. Are you doing this whole defending JRE shtick because you're going to be on a show after this Reddit post? Yeah, totally.
Labor is prior to and independent of capital. Capital is the only fruit of labor and could have never existed if labor had not first existed. Labor is superior to capital and deserves much the higher consideration. There's a reason why Karl Marx, uh, uh, like, you know, he never got letters back, but there's a reason why Karl Marx sent letters to Abraham Lincoln, a gay Marxist, a bisexual Marxist, sorry. He got letters back from his secretary, I think, basically auto-replied to. So don't be a fucking idiot because you like heard Dinesh D'Souza and a bunch of dumbass Republicans say that like the party switch never happened or the Southern strategy is not real because you'll look like a fucking idiot. Just look around. It's that theory is unironically dumber than uh, flat earth theories because the, uh, when you walk outside, you at least feel like the earth is fucking flat, but you can literally look to who's wearing the Confederate gear and who those motherfuckers are voting for. You think people who are still upholding the Confederacy are voting for Barack Obama or the Democratic Party? Are you psychotic? I believe that there's a lot of luck involved in life. And there's a lot of... Uh, we're very fortunate. Look, I'm very fortunate just to have been born in America. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate to have had uh, adversity as a young person. So I, I recognize and I appreciate success as, as a man. So I'm politically homeless. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this weird b b both way world where I, I see people that are trying to enact programs to absolve people of student loan debt, and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm in. Mm -hmm. I see programs where people are trying to fix inner cities and, and, and provide community support and provide uh, ways that you uh, enact programs that help people get out of bad situations, and I'm all in on those too. So I'm homeless. I'm politically homeless. Yeah, dude, totally. That's not being politically homeless, dude. Why move to Texas to avoid taxes? Dude, you are fucking a psycho. Joe Rogan did not move to Texas to avoid taxes. He might be saying that. He moved to Texas because he was, he's a fucking chud when it comes to mask wearing and shit like that. He's like, I want more space. I don't know why every fucking 14-year-old that's on Twitch exclusively thinks people move from one fucking location to the other to avoid income taxes, dude. You know what happens when you're a fucking self-employed person? Okay. Income taxes are the easiest thing to avoid as a self-employed person, you 14-year-old. You can live in any state you want and fucking avoid taxes if you are self-employed. Fuck. It's literally just like Twitch brain rot. People are like, oh, anyone that moves to Texas must be moving for tax avoidance. Anyone that moves to Texas must be moving for tax avoidance. Okay, dude. Tell them that most likely Spotify paid Joe Rogan LLC and Joe pays him a small salary to avoid taxes. Exactly. Like, that shit is like hella fucking easy to do, man. And not only that, but someone as wealthy as fucking Joe Rogan just has all of their assets in the fucking markets, dude. Okay, so it doesn't matter. God damn, dude. It's literally as easy as ad avoidance, okay? Because at the top of the hour, they're not following the logic of tax avoidance on a flow through entity income is claimed every year. I mean, the easiest way to do tax avoidance, especially as it pertains to income, is by fucking moving all of your wealth into the market. And a person like Joe Rogan, 100%, without a doubt, does that anyway. They have fucking, they, they have accountants and they have money managers. Ms. moved to Texas for the culture. I think for the most part, Ms. Give moved, Ms. Give moved to Texas because all the other big streamers are there. So he could fucking, you know, work with them. There are plenty of, there are plenty of different ways that you can, there are plenty of different ways that hella false. He wanted content. No, I'm sure he fucking wanted to avoid, dude, uh, to be honest, look, 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 there's a fat fucking Spotify paycheck coming in. It's not like that is coming in in the form of like, uh, that's going to come in as income. He probably wanted to take the 12% that he would normally be taxed on that and keep it to himself. Okay. So tax avoidance, I'm sure, was a, a, a part of this. But it's not the main part of it, okay? 
It's an insignificant part of it. People fucking lose their minds. <clears throat> no state income tax in Nevada. People uh, don't see people moving to Las Vegas to avoid taxes. Yeah, a lot of people move to Texas for the culture of it, okay? Austin is now little Los Angeles, but in fucking Texas. People want to, people want to like feel like they're in Texas and live their Kona best self. But when you are uh, self-employed anyway, and you have like a big fucking entertainment business, it really doesn't matter. Like you can, you can switch your assets around. Like there are plenty of fucking financial tools readily available for tax avoidance without even having to fucking move from the state. When you look at the raw data, when you look at the actual numbers of people or who, what the demographic is of people leaving the state of California, it's not rich people, dude. A much larger percentage of poorer people are leaving uh, the state of California. And the reason for why they're leaving is because, not because of like tax avoidance for the wealthy, it's because they can't fucking live in California because the housing market is unaffordable. The cost of living is incredibly expensive in California. That's also partially the reason why California had a $50 billion budget surplus in COVID, during COVID. Why? Because rich motherfuckers stay here. They don't give a fuck. They love California. They stay here. And they pay that extra fucking income tax. That's the reason why people leave California. So don't fall into the fucking capitalist, wealthy person, uh, neoliberal propaganda that like, we're going to scare off the rich by uh, having like high income taxes. That's why people are leaving. When in fact, that's not like, there's no, the evidence does not point to that. Alexis it points to the exact opposite as a matter of fact. Public Policy Institute of California. People who move to California have higher incomes than those who move away. Some have argued that the opposite is taking place, that California's relatively progressive high personal income taxes drive out higher income residents. But the fact is that California has been losing lower and middle income residents to other states for some time while continuing to gain higher income adults. In the past five years, the flow of middle income residents out of the state has accelerated. Most of the people who move across state lines do so for economic or family reasons. The vast majority of adults who left California in the 2010s cited jobs, housing, or family as a primary reason. Rich people don't move, dude. Rich people live wherever the fuck they want to live. So you guys are hella dumb for thinking that like, you know, tax avoidance, tax avoidance, that's the main reason. Tax avoidance. Rich people are fucking avoiding taxes. That's why they're moving to Texas. Like, yeah, I got it, dude. Twitch meme. Twitch meta. Got it. Rich people don't even move out of California. They just buy a house in fucking Florida and live there for six months plus one day. <laughs> it's the other thing. It doesn't mention homeless increase. Dude. The reason why it doesn't mention homelessness is because that's exclusive to like Caitlyn Jenner and 11 other rich people that are not moving from California. They're still living in California. The Republicans, they say, oh, I can't believe I have to see homeless people. Oh, it's so terrible. I'm leaving California. No, those motherfuckers aren't leaving California. They're just lying to you. Okay? Also, like Ben Shabibo left uh, Los Angeles because of homelessness. And then he moved where? To Nashville. Why didn't he move to a bumfuck part of Tennessee, huh? Why did he move to the only part of Tennessee that has a fuckload of homeless people? What's up, dude? What happened? You just wanted to see the Tennessee homeless people instead of the ones in fucking Studio City? Is that what happened? That's so strange that Ben Shapiro moved from Los Angeles to fucking Nashville, okay? So strange, dude. So strange that these, you know, supposed conservatives that have lived in fucking, in the heart of like liberal paradise their entire lives, then turn around and move to yet another incredibly liberal area. Dude, he didn't even move to Nashville. He moved his company's headquarters to Nashville. He moved to Miami, so it's even worse. I did not know that. That's hilarious. Miami, the, the, the you know, conservative safe haven of Miami. I'm glad. All these daily streams, whether big or whether small. So there he is.
once again The sun is streaming The sun is streaming You wait